Hello, everybody. Welcome to this session uh, titled Lessons Learned from a Large Scale OpenStack Deployment with Triplo. Let's uh, jump into the session. So, a little bit about myself uh, I'm Sai Sindur Malani. I work as a team lead in the Red Hat Performance and Scale RD division. I am focused on uh, private cloud technologies uh, like OpenStack as well as hybrid cloud technologies like OpenShift on bare metal. Uh, I'm based out of the greater Boston area in the US, and in my free time, I enjoy traveling and hiking. Over to my Hi, friend and um, colleague, Pradipta. Hi, everyone. I am Pradipta Sau, working as a senior software engineer in performance scale team at Red Hat. I'm focusing on technologies like OpenStack, edge computing, and NFP. And uh, I'm based out of Pune, India, and I'm loving to travel, uh, food, and uh, watching movies. All right. So like we mentioned, we are part of the performance and scale team. Uh, so what do we do? We are really on a mission to make sure that Red Hat OpenStack platform is the most scalable and best performing OpenStack distribution out there. And because Red Hat is an upstream first company, by doing so, we are also ensuring that all of our code and all of our fixes go into upstream and the community benefits from it. So overall, end users have a better experience with OpenStack at scale. Also, over the past few years, you know, repeatedly talking to customers, OpenStack has matured to a point where it has a lot of functionality, and customers are no longer really worried about the functionality, but you know, they're starting to expand their footprints in terms of number of nodes per cluster and so on and so forth. And they're really looking for something that scales and you know, scalability and performance has repeatedly come up as a priority for our customers. And when we talk about the platform scalability itself, which is OpenStack scalability, you know, I think the first step to getting there is having an installer that is scalable. Because let's all agree, I think we all agree that we can't have a platform that scales without having an installer that scales and that's able to deploy a scalable platform in the first place. So over the past few years and few releases, we've been laser focused on making sure that OpenStack scales um, to numbers that have not been tested before. So where do we do all of this testing? Initially, uh, you know, we were using partner labs to get to these high node counts because you know it's not easy to have hundreds and hundreds of bare metal nodes to do this testing. But you know, starting in 2016, uh, you know, we've realized that to shorten the feedback loop between the feedback that we get from scale testing and you know the product development itself, we need to build these capabilities in house. So we invested time, energy, and money into building what we call the Red Hat Scale Lab, which is a lab with in excess of 900 bare metal servers, uh, you know, a combination of Dell and Supermicro bare metal nodes. This lab supports scale testing of all of Red Hat's products, including but not limited to OpenStack and OpenShift, of course. And you know, the lab has really helped us accelerate our testing and our supported node counts and you know, had a positive impact on both upstream and downstream OpenStack scalability and performance. Because this is where uh, we do all of our testing, and this is basically our playground. So because this talk is around you know, building scalable OpenStack clouds with Triplo, let's, let's look, take a quick overview of uh, what Triplo is. Uh, and also, while doing that, let's all acknowledge the fact that OpenStack deployments are not the most straightforward thing uh, to do. Because when you, when you deploy OpenStack, you're basically not just installing software. It's, it's deploying and architecting your cloud platform. So Triplo is a tool that helps you deploy and update and manage the lifecycle of your production-grade OpenStack cloud. So two important concepts in Triplo, you have something called an undercloud. Think of it like a jump host, but you know it's basically an all-in-one OpenStack install that has services like Nova, Neutron, and Heat to deploy and manage something we call the overcloud, which is your actual production cloud where you run user workloads. So the undercloud and overcloud and you know architecting and deploying and you know making sure your undercloud code scales uh, is an important part of being able to deploy a scalable overcloud. So this is a quick snapshot of uh, triple scale testing that we've done over the past few releases and years. You can see that up until the Pike release, we've hovered pretty much around the 300 uh, node count. Uh, and up until Newton, we were relying on external partner labs. But you can see that starting with Pike, we've moved all of our testing to our internal scale lab. 
And you know, over the past couple of releases, we've achieved in excess of 500 compute nodes per cluster. Uh, and specifically with Train, which is our OpenStack 16.1 release, long-term release, we've achieved in excess of 700 compute nodes, all part of the same cluster. So let's uh, let's look at the scale testing that we've done for our most recent release, which is Train. So I'll give a quick overview of the deployment uh, before passing it off to Pradipta to take us forward. So the deployment methodology, like we've been discussing, is Triplo. We're using Triplo as the installer. We have one bare metal under cloud node. We have three monolithic controllers that run all of OpenStack's uh, services, uh, like API and uh, you know, Nova Scheduler, so on and so forth, uh, in an HA fashion. Uh, we have three Ceph storage nodes with four disks each and 712 compute nodes overall. So obviously, we didn't deploy all 712 compute nodes at once. Uh, we slowly scaled up to 712 compute nodes over a period of time, you know, a couple of weeks. And also, the Ceph storage cluster itself is pretty small because we are not really trying to improve Ceph scale here. Uh, we are more uh, focused on the Ceph client side, which is the compute node and you know how many Ceph clients can the small Ceph cluster handle. The deployment was through Ironic and Pixie. We had about 14 uh, composable roles overall, so one for compute, uh, one for controllers, one for Ceph storage nodes, and 12 different composable roles for the uh, compute nodes because all of these compute nodes were from different manufacturers with different network configurations. So we really needed composable roles. So we were actually even scale testing in terms of the number of composable roles used in the deployment. Like I said, at the end of this uh, exercise, we had about 712 Ceph clients. Uh, looking at the undercloud and controller specs, you know, Skylake machines with uh, 32 cores with hyper-threading, so 64 logical cores. The controllers had a little bit more memory than the undercloud, but you know, overall these were pretty beefy machines. And you know, looking at the Ceph storage specs, we have uh, same Skylake machines, but in this case we have uh, four 3TB NVMEs for the OSDs. So I will hand it off to Pradeep that to take us forward from here. Thank you, Sai. Uh, yeah, I think uh, Sai has covered all this uh, deployment type. Uh, coming to the software specification, OpenStack version, we are using trend release. And uh, the deployment methodology of OpenStack, we use Triplo, which is based on the config download, Ansible based uh, config download pro method. And uh, for um, uh, OpenStack performance testing tool, we are having Robit and rally tool, which having various scenario to execute the, to measure the tenant, OpenStack tenant workload. Uh, for monitoring uh, side from end to end resource for uh, under cloud and over cloud, we are using Grafana um, and Collecti uh, as in uh, installing on uh, under cloud and over cloud nodes. And uh, for in, uh, installation of OpenStack train release, we use uh, the base operating system, Red Hat Linux 8.2. Uh, for uh, networking backend in uh, OpenStack train, we are having uh, we are using o OVN, which is the default networking backend. For OpenStack control plane, we are using monolithic uh, three, uh, control plane, which is three controller, and having a high availability for functionality. Uh, for uh, under cloud and over cloud, all the OpenStack services are containerized uh, for in train release, and it's uh, all all the container service managed by Podman. Next slide, please. Yeah, uh, coming to the deployment workflow, uh, as Sai already highlighted that uh, Triplo is having the basic principle of OpenStack on OpenStack. The so first OpenStack services is installed on the, uh, uh, as an installer, uh, which is uh, named as Undercloud. So in, uh, in in the scale environment, we use uh, uh, under cloud as a bare metal node uh, with uh, the sizing of uh, control plane IP, which is required for our 712 compute node and including controller and uh, safe node. Uh, so <clears throat> we did not integrate any high uh, like advanced feature like uh, minion and routing functionality here. All the provisioning request is a layer two scenario. 
and the second um, we try we applied the ovn patches we, we are aware of the ovn patches uh, from our ovn team like uh, which is uh, uh, potentially uh, fix the scale issues and which is and also give us the stability in the scale environments and as a prerequisite from the triplo side we created a um, uh, heat template for the composable uh, composable role for our controller uh, safe and compute nodes uh, from the various hardware type and also uh, we created profiles and uh, uh, flavors for different hardware type for further deployment and once we've done all this template and profile flavor we we are trying a basic over cloud deployment with minimal node count of control three controller three safe node and one compute node and uh, we have successfully deployed that and after the de uh, deployment of basic over cloud we continue to register the remaining available node in the lab allocation and we'll continue to uh, do further scale out of compute no available compute node and in this way we achieve 700 compute node using a 12 composable role and after all the deploy like after the scale deployment we have done some exercise in the control plane scalability as well for uh, the key services of nova neutron uh, and cinder and uh, for the all this uh, exercise we have uh, monitoring the environment through grafana and we are, and we capture all this document steps which is required for the scale uh, testing and we uh, and we capture the debug uh, methodology and also we file multiple bugs for further fixation in the future and the further enhancement and uh, fixation in uh, uh, upstream side as well yeah, coming to the highlights, there is no regression in scalability in OpenStack re release compared to OpenStack Queen. Um, yeah, uh, because of this, uh, Triplo has introduced with the Ansible post based model config download, which is significantly reduced the under cloud resource utilization. And uh, due to that, we don't need to bump up any worker thread and default timeout value for keystone, uh, like uh, the key resources of under cloud uh, for heat. Keystone, Mistral, and Jacker, and uh, and post introduction of uh, Ansible limit feature also help us to minimize the deployment time because it's uh, we can selectively choose which node we need to be uh, configure the over cloud services, and the next highlight is heat engine is uh, consume the low memory uh, lower memory footprint compared to open uh, previous OpenStack releases uh, as we significantly optimize the heat engine from the pike release and it uh, now we have uh, it it uh, use the lower memory footprint in OpenStack train and after the deployment as we did some exercise in uh, control play uh, like uh, control plane scalability and performance for 2000 vm creation and volume attachment we did not also observe any regression and uh, the next highlight the rabbit mq is very stable in openstack train release we did not any uh, observe any regression and did not find any kind of exponential spying in uh, performance spike in uh, our monitoring tool and OVN also is getting matured to scale uh, uh, the agent to uh, 700 plus compute node as a default neutron backend. Um, and the, the uh, measured uh, thing is the Ansible config download, which is uh, like uh, is more faster comparing to the previous OpenStack release like Open uh, Queen. Uh, for an example, using the limit option, we tried uh, 100 node deployment, and it took around less than two hours, which is quite faster comparing to the previous OpenStack releases. Yeah, here is the one uh, snapshot of heat engine resource consumption at 500 compute node, uh, where the y-axis is considering as the memory consumption, and uh, uh, the x-axis is the uh, time duration of uh, the uh, heat engine uses for the scale activity. So if you see that a heat engine is gradually increase uh, the memory consumption in um, uh, when we add a batch of compute node for scale out uh, scale out activity. And in 500 compute node, we observe uh, it still having eight gig of memory utilization where the thread utilization is having 
25 core and it's comparing to the previous OpenStack release, it's uh, less and which is the good uh, positive for uh, the uh, OpenStack trend release and it's a, uh, yeah. Uh, coming to the 700 uh, uh, node, like after 700 node deployment in idle environment, we observe like uh, heat engine, which is configured with the 24 worker thread it consumed uh, near to 50 gig of uh, RSS memory. And uh, uh, for further validation, we tried heat engine, uh, restart the heat engine, which uh, bring down the memory uh, to three GB and which it looks like as a linear way. And uh, it slowly increased uh, uh, like uh, um, uh, the memory when the, uh, we do the uh, scale out operation for the remaining node. And in the entire validation, we did not observe any memory leak, um, memory leak uh, uh, in heat side. Yeah, uh, uh, as we did some extensive uh, control plane performance scale after the scale deployment in 700 node, uh, we used the rally sand scenario to execute 200 VM uh, request with uh, uh, in the, across the compute node and uh, with the various scenario like the uh, nova boot server volume creation and attaching volume meet and uh, list out the server and volume and attaching uh, a network port so in the entire operation like if you see the graph uh, there is no exponential spike over here and all this resource and the utilization is in a linear way and uh, the best part is the nova boot server uh, it took like very less time, um, like 13 seconds for uh, to boot a instance. Uh, so, uh, which is uh, like better comparing to uh, the previous OpenStack releases. Next slide, please. Yeah, uh, of course, there are some challenges. Uh, I wanted to highlight all these issues which we have uh, updated. It has already been fixed in upstream side and also be uh, uh, getting documented in uh, do documented. So when we ha when we did the test, the end user experience is little rough, like from um, uh, uh, from the deployment perspective. The first challenges is uh, uh, was we faced like overcloud deployment command with limit did not reduce the deployment time for safe ansible. Uh, uh, as the safe ansible script as uh, kick off by uh, the config download ansible config download. And uh, due to that, we came up with some manual intervention, which is support for the safe ansible with uh, safe ansible script with the limit uh, uh, option, limit parameter for specific node, so that we can continue uh, get faster uh, deployment and we can reduce the uh, deployment time. And the second challenge is the vehicle expression consumed too much memory when we increase the 200 node count, uh, 200 node count. Uh, and heat stack got failed with the error, uh, and it because of the new vehicle expression has integrated, and due to uh, and it's a uh, um, it's a uh, so for that we have to increase the memory count. But yeah, we raise a uh, upstream bug to optimize the vehicle expression so that we can um, continue with the default memory node count uh, in uh, when we scale. 200 plus node. And the next challenge is deployment server blacklist, which is usually use this triple parameter to blacklist the specific um, or faulty node uh, in the overcloud environment. So we tried this scenario in using the limit uh, uh, parameter, ansible limit feature, but uh, uh, there is an impact we observe like, uh, uh, like all this Nova compute services goes down uh, and uh, uh, due to some additional Ansible playbook. Uh, so uh, our deployment framework team has addressed this issue and it has already been fixed uh, in upstream side. We try to like document uh, the steps uh, which is applicable for operators so that they can use this parameter in a proper way uh, in a large scale environment. So continuing the challenges, I'll hand over to Sai and uh, he'll uh, yeah thank you yeah so yeah, sure. i'll i'll continue with uh, challenges here so one of the things that we observed was the default ansible fork count that is set by you know the config download playbooks was 10 
times multiplied by the number of processes on the machine. Uh, that is the undercloud. And in our case, it was you know a 64 core machine. So what happened was the four count was being set to 640, which is not a great idea. Uh, you know, because you're obviously going to be bound by the memory here if you have so many forks. So we raised an issue and we worked with upstream to lower this uh, fork count. We also did extensive profiling of uh, Ansible tasks while the installer was running. So we were able to identify tasks that were, uh, you know, specifically taking more CPU or memory. And based on that, some refactoring of the task was done. Also, when it comes to OVN and scalability, we identified that, uh, the OVSDB bundle was not uh, replying to the liveness probe from Pacemaker when it was really busy and when it was taking a long time to process its uh, loop. So what we did was we bumped out, uh, we bumped up the default probe interval for Pacemaker so that it does not do a failover when not needed. Also, we had to bump up a couple of uh, timeouts here, like OVN remote probe interval and OVN open flow probe interval on the compute nodes to give OVN controller on the compute nodes enough breathing space when there's a lot of churn happening in the environment. Like, for example, when you boot 2,000 VMs at once, there's a lot of churn that happens in the environment and an OVN controller gets really busy. So we identified these tunings and we documented these. So coming to the outcomes of this scale testing, you know, like any scale testing activity, we want to identify issues before customers run into them and, you know, fix these issues. So we came up with bugs that identified issues. And we also came up with tunings that work for scale. And in cases where it made sense, we actually push these tunings as defaults upstream. So you know you get this out of the box for free without any you know, performance engineering uh, voodoo. Uh, we also feel confident that we've been able to provide a better end user experience at scale as a result of this testing. And as I mentioned previously, we did extensive profiling of Ansible tasks during installation uh, you know, that really resulted in some changes architecturally as well as refactoring some of the existing Ansible tasks to make sure that Ansible consumes a lower footprint uh, on the undercloud as well as Ansible runs faster. Uh, and as Pradipta went over and I also did in my previous slide, we fight close to 15 bugs and, you know, these are the high level issues. I'm not going to go into detail uh, you know, with each of these, but you know, just wanted you to know that we filed bugs, worked with developers closely, and got these fixed, uh, so that customers have better experience at the end of the day. Uh, the last part of this presentation, I want to walk you through some of the best practices and lessons learned. You know, doing this, you know, multiple times over several years, over you know, several releases. What are some of the best practices and recommendations when you have to do a triple deployment at scale? So one of the first things I want to highlight is, you know, always try to use a bare metal node for undercloud. As tempting as it is to use a VM, we have to keep in mind that the undercloud is an integral component of Triplo, and you're not done with it as soon as you finish your uh, deployment, right? You have to use it for uh, upgrades and what updates. So the undercloud is a really crucial component, and you know it's best to use bare metal so that you don't run into problems later on, even if your initial stack deploy is fine. I would also recommend using a 10 gig provisioning network so that uh, you know the provisioning is faster and you're not bottlenecked uh, if you use like a one gig card. Also, you have to plan your undercloud for scale you, you know, right at the moment when you deploy it. Things like the control plane subnet range are hard to change once the initial deployment has been done. So always deploy and configure for scale. Uh, I think it's also recommended to use memcached uh, for caching with Keystone and Heat on the undercloud uh, for better performance. And you should get this for uh, as a default right now. As a result of a testing, we've pushed these as defaults upstream. And if you're not using telemetry on the undercloud, it's better to set the notification driver on the undercloud services to no op so that it eases some pressure on the undercloud rabbit MQ. And usually, I think the first bottleneck people might hit is when you scale past 250 nodes per cluster. Uh, you start seeing heat stack update failures, although you don't see them as often now because a lot of uh, uh, improvements have been done. It could be due to insufficient keystone or heat workers, heat engine workers. So watch out for that. But again, as defaults, we have better work accounts now out of the box. When Ironic has a lot of bare metal nodes uh, to manage, in this case, 700 plus compute nodes, 
the conductor can get a little busy in terms of CPU usage, uh, just getting power state and polling that. So you know we've seen that uh, pumping up the sync power state interval to a higher number, uh, which is the number of seconds here, helps to reduce the number of CPU spikes. Also, when we add you know a few compute nodes to an already existing large overcloud cluster, I think it's recommended. It's 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 highly recommended to either use the skip deploy identifier flag in the case of older releases, which use heat and OS collect config for configuration, or the dash dash limit flag in the case of newer releases, which use Ansible config download to cut down the deployment time. If you're not doing any other changes, you know you're basically just adding a few compute nodes. This is the best way to cut down the deployment time and make sure that Ansible or you know Puppet doesn't run on all of the existing nodes and only runs on the new nodes to save time. Also, I recommend scaling up compute nodes in batches if possible, because uh, that will help you identify and root cause issues if there are any much faster. Uh, based on our experience, we can also say that the monolithic control plane itself can handle both control plane load as well as you know the scale of the cluster if the controller nodes are sized properly. So sizing becomes really crucial here. And uh, yeah, we are almost at the end of this presentation. And I just want to leave you with a couple of links to some of the blogs we've written uh, about scale testing OpenStack 13 and OpenStack 16.1, which are queens and train respectively upstream. And with that, uh, thank you for watching our presentation. Thank you.